Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be comparing the Ryzen 5 1400 to the FX8350 and we'll talk about whether the R5 is worth the upgrade for those who are still holding on to their FX-based systems. I've been thinking of making this video for a while now, since first and second gen Ryzen processors have significantly came down in price, and CPUs such as the Ryzen 5 1600 and Ryzen 5 2600 are currently being sold for $100 and $120 on Amazon respectively. You can even get yourself a 2700 for $170 as of recording this video. So let's jump right into it and see whether the R5 1400 that you can get for around $80 is actually worth the upgrade. For the system specs, we have the 4-core 8-thread Ryzen 5 overclocked to 3.825 GHz at 1.39 volts using an aftermarket cooler, an MSI B350 Tomahawk motherboard, and 8 GB of DDR4 memory clocked at 2933 MHz. The 8-core FX processor has an overclock of 4.582 GHz at 1.5 volts using a Zalman CNPS 14X cooler with a Northbridge overclock of 2585 MHz, a GB 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard, and 8 GB of DDR3 memory clocked at 2193 MHz. Now, you can overclock these CPUs a little bit higher than what I was able to achieve, especially the FX8350 if you got lucky with your chip or maybe have better cooling, but this is as much as I could push them before getting either limited by the temperature, voltage, or just simply becoming unstable. Speaking of temperatures, they were within the safe limits on both systems and there was no sign of throttling using Intel Burn Test, which is a software that tends to stress your PC pretty hard, so the temps are not going to be getting as high while playing games or even rendering. For the graphics card, we have a GTX 970 with an overclock of 125 MHz on both core and memory clocks, and considering it's not a very powerful graphics card, I'll be using lowest settings, at a resolution of 1600 by 900 to reduce any GPU bottlenecks. All right, let's begin with some software and starting off we have Cinebench R15. Here the Ryzen 5 gets 154 and 836 Cinebench points, which is an increase of 42 and 15% respectively over the FX8350. Next up we have Corona, where the Ryzen 5 manages to render the scene in 4 minutes and 35 seconds, with the FX8350 trailing not too far behind at 5 minutes and 12 seconds. Next we have Blender, and to be honest I expected the FX8350 to perform a bit better here, but apparently Blender is a software that also cares about single core performance. Here the Ryzen 5 got ahead of the 8-core FX by 29%, rendering the BMW scene in 9 minutes and 24 seconds. Using the classroom scene, the Ryzen processor pulls ahead once again, finishing it in 30 minutes and 24 seconds, compared to the FX8350 that got it rendered in 40 minutes and 39 seconds. Moving on to gaming, let's begin with Apex Legends, and while the Ryzen 5 did pull ahead around 10 FPS, both systems were able to stay well above 100 frames most of the time, delivering a very playable experience to the point that you wouldn't notice a difference. Warning. Incoming care package. I love loot. 
Next up we have GTA 5, which is a heavily single threaded title and because of that we can see an up to 25 FPS difference in favor of the Ryzen 5 thanks to its single core advantage. Moving on we have Need for Speed 2015, which is yet another single threaded title, thanks to which the Ryzen 5 never really dropped below 75 frames per second, with the FX8350 falling behind 10 to 20 FPS depending on the area. Now, personally, I don't really find it to be that big of a deal as this is the kind of game where you don't really need a high frame rate to stay competitive unlike titles such as CSGO, PUBG, etc. And the FX8350 was able to deliver well above 60 FPS most of the time. Next we have PUBG, and here we have a difference of roughly 10 to 15 FPS, because of which the Ryzen 5 did feel a bit smoother in demanding areas such as Pachinki and Yasne Palana. Other than that, performance was basically identical and the game was very playable on both systems. Next up we have The Witcher 3, where we also see the Ryzen 5 pulling ahead around 10 to 15 FPS depending on the area. Moving on to some multi-threaded titles, we have The Division, and I gotta say I'm very surprised at how close the FX processor is to the Ryzen 5. The difference between these two CPUs is basically indistinguishable with the Ryzen 5, maybe pulling ahead 5 to 10 frames at best. Next up we have Watch Dogs 2, and here the FX8350 also puts up a decent fight thanks to its multi-core performance, falling behind the Ryzen 5 by only 5 to 10 frames per second.
And for our final game, we have Battlefield 5, which is a title where the FX processor finally starts to show its age. Now, single player mode and 32 player matches on smaller maps are not that big of a deal. The game is pretty playable, yet 64 player games on larger maps is where the FX 8350 begins to struggle. Obviously, the Ryzen processor manages to deliver an overall better performance in this title, especially when playing on large-scale maps with a lot of players, though there were situations where even the R5 did drop below 60 frames per second. Obviously, it wasn't as bad as it was with the FX 8350, but it did happen every now and then. So, is the Ryzen 5 1400 worth getting over the FX 8350? I believe that it is a question that only you can find answer to. Personally, I don't think it's worth it, especially if you have your 8-core FX CPU overclocked to 4.5 GHz or above. Chances are you won't notice that big of a difference unless you play lightweight games or work on single-threaded tasks, because the FX 8350 isn't too far behind the Ryzen 5 in terms of multi-threaded performance. The only couple of reasons why I would recommend getting this Ryzen processor are if you've been using your 8-core FX CPU at stock and will be overclocking the Ryzen 5 1400, 
or if you're still using something like a 6-core FX or Phenom CPU. Otherwise, I'd rather go for at least the Ryzen 5 1600 or even the 2600 if possible, both of which are much better choices and will definitely last you a very long time. Alright, that's been it. Be sure to leave a like and share this video with the others. I would really appreciate that. Also, feel free to support me on Patreon or by simply using Amazon affiliate links provided in the description down below. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.